Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie coming at you on Tuesday, July 19, 2011. Weather's been really hot, but God's still good. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you're staying cool. For those who need water, may the Lord send you water so that you will no longer be dry. And for those who are getting too much water, may the Lord dry you up so that you will no longer have floods and lose your goods to the rain. I wish you well. I'll continue to keep you in prayer. There's so much going on. God said all this stuff was going to happen, uh, and we need to be prepared. Uh, the Lord said all this was going to happen. Your local weatherman cannot I tell you exactly what the weather is going to be like the next day. If you notice, they've been wrong a lot lately. So uh, pray up. Pray up and keep your relationship with the Father going. I would like to talk to you about Jude 4 today. Uh, just to talk to you a little bit about Jude 4. There are things going on in the world that are just abominations to God. We know what those abominations are. We, we, any Christian that reads the Bible and studies the Bible knows what God likes and what God does not like. And there are too many things uh, grandfathering in, as they say. They, it, when I had my daycare, uh, there were people, I was one of them, we just grandfathered our way into certain laws because we had been here for so long that by the time they decided to write laws for daycare, they had to include us, and you know we automatically uh, were included in on those laws, and we passed. And everything was fine because we've been there so long. But there's people right now. There's things going on right now that God is not pleased with, and they're trying to grandfather their way into the laws, make themselves a part of the law, uh, trying to make everyone uphold them because they are covered by the law. And there are things happening that uh, I know God's going to strike down real soon, if He hasn't started already. Uh, God's not God's not a joke. He's not a man that He should lie. And God is not going to roll up His His uh, sleeves and box you. Your arm is too short to box with God. What God says goes. Amen. God is the truth. What He says will come to pass. Will come to pass. I'm reading from uh, the general epistle of Jude, the brother of James, verse 4, which says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He is telling us to beware of those who crept in. A person who creeps, or they're always tipping and hiding and ducking, is perversion and lack of self-restraint. Uh, tw twisting God's word. There are too many men who've been twisting God's word now. God does say that his grace is sufficient for us, as he told the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. Paul said that he had a, bu a messenger of Satan that was buffeting against him, and Paul got tired of that thing, and he asked God three times to take it away, and he thought God was going to take it away, and God told him, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. So in other words, God is saying his grace is fine. His grace is, is okay. God gave everyone his grace. Grace is receiving something that you do not deserve the blood of jesus christ the work of god of jesus jesus's work on a cross when he shed his blood and water also came out of his body which represents the word the blood of jesus you're covered by the blood of jesus and you're covered by the word jesus is the word the word is jesus hallelujah and, and the holy spirit is your teacher he reveals things to you. God is called the revealer of secrets. And if you want to know the secrets that's in the Bible, don't try to figure them out on your own. You have to go to the Father. You have to go to the Son. You have to go to the Holy Spirit. Father, Savior, and Teacher to find out what is meant. People are taking God's words and twisting them to however they want them to be. Whatever fits the occasion at the time. As you, you know... If you notice it says um, about the grace of our God into lasciviousness, what this is, there are too many people, and I know while I'm getting ready to say this, some of you are probably SMHing, right? Shaking my head, shaking your head, right? There are too many people who are abusing God's good grace. It's as simple as that. There are organizations, there are full whole churches, 
there are cults there are there are people in this world that are totally abusing the grace of God and for that God is not pleased now just as the Apostle Paul says uh, since we have God's grace does this doesn't this mean that we could sin should we sin more so the grace can abound so we can have more grace no Paul says no that's not what it means God gave you grace to keep you going through this life in Jesus name you're supposed to be living a holy righteous life this means that you don't you don't have to you don't have to uh, have a, 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 a forgive me conscience you know you ask God to forgive you but God doesn't expect for you to say forgive me God forgive me God forgive me God forgive me God forgive me Lord forgive me Lord I did this forgive me Lord you know you're covered by the blood that from the time that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior you're covered by the blood your past your present and your future sins are covered by the blood of Jesus now this doesn't mean that you should sin on purpose don't do anything on purpose but if you slip up which it should be the only slipping up not on purpose you're covered God said his grace is sufficient for you so whatever this messenger of Satan was it was bothering Paul the Apostle Paul which everyone tries to guess it what it was they try to make it look like it was maybe a sexual thing or he had a sexual problem and he called it a messenger of Satan or a uh, homosexual problem and then I've heard that he had uh, physical problems like eye problems and there was different things wrong Every, everybody keeps coming up with this this different nobody knows what it was the Bible doesn't say what it is and we don't know what it is either but God told him my grace is sufficient for you that doesn't mean that God is giving him a license to continue on in whatever this was that he was dealing with Paul had to learn to tell that thing to leave him alone in the name of Jesus you know shake it when you have something that follows you around and bothers you and and it's an outright temptation or an outright sin you are supposed to be living a holy life you're supposed to bind that thing and rebuke it send it to dry places never to return in Jesus name and then fill that that space that it took in your life fill that space up with more of the Holy Spirit of God you don't need anything but God right you can say peace and joy and love and all that if you want to but just fill it up with the Holy Spirit of God and he'll give you what you need so when you have a problem like that yeah just take it to the Lord before you fall halfway for the temptation or for whatever it is lust whatever it is ask the Lord to help you ask God to help you amen there are people who are abusing the good grace of God there are people who think that what they do is okay you know we we do this and we do that but that's okay because we're covered by the grace of God and the look there are some things in the Bible that God tells you is an abomination unto him so be careful of your life be careful of how you live your life and what you do because you could be doing something that God frowns upon something that just is an abomination unto him something that he just does not like now we have churches uh, that put uh, gay people in, in, in the pulpit but homosexuality is an abomination unto God God tells us that so you know we still have people who think well it's okay because we're, we're covered by grace no you can look in that in, in Romans 1 24 Matthew 19 4 1 Corinthians 6 9 Leviticus 18:22, Leviticus 20:13, Colossians 3:5. Homosexuality is the enemy's way to stop recreation. Now there are people who are being ordained. I understand are being ordained. God doesn't hate the people. No, Jesus died for everybody. But believe me, He hates the sin this is a typical example of people who turn God's grace into lasciviousness it's perversion it, it, and, and they not only do they pervert their private lives they try to pervert 
the Word of God as well. And, and that's just one example. There's other examples. There's drunks. Drunks in the pulpit. Liars in the pulpit. People who, who are, are fighting, fight with lust, the spirit of lust. The grace of God is not a license to sin. So if you are going to a church that just seems to cover up a bit too much, you know, <laughs> the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin, then maybe you need to pray for that church and pray for the leaders of that church. Because we continue to abuse God's grace down here on this earth, and what is being left out, like I said before, is holy living. Yes, you have God's grace, but you must pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Jesus just didn't do anything he wanted to do. He was a perfect example of how we should live. And this is what he meant when he said he, I'm, you know, he's the example. Jesus didn't fall for this stuff. Jesus wasn't a homosexual priest. Jesus didn't have problems with children and babies. Jesus wasn't a drunk. They called him a wine bibber, but he wasn't a drunk. He did communion, drank, turned, turned water into wine, drank wine, you know, uh, and they called him a wine bibber. I'm sure that name didn't come out of nowhere. You know, they, they talked about him like a dog, but he was a perfect example as how we should live. Uh, holiness. The Bible said Jesus didn't even have anywhere to lay his head. Now, in Matthew, if you, if you begin to read Mark, I believe it's Mark or Matthew, who talks about Jesus had a house and he took some of the disciples into his house and showed him where he lived. He said, Master, where do you live? And he said, well, come into my house and see. He took him to his house. But that was then. We're talking about when he started his, his ministry. He said, I have nowhere to lay my, lay my head. See, Jesus was perfect. Jesus didn't smoke cigarettes. Jesus didn't smoke crack. He didn't shoot heroin <laughs> he didn't do any of those kind of things and then wear the robe and call himself a priest he didn't do it so my word to you today is yes God has given you grace but don't try to live your life without holiness with grace comes holiness a holy God gave it to you and Jesus said, the Father and I are one. And we should say the same thing. If the Father and you are one together, then you are truly holy. If you are not living a holy life, then you're a liar and a hypocrite, where we get our word actor. And Satan is your father the devil is your father for he is the father of lies amen he is the father of lies now you might think you're getting away with that but God is also called the revealer of secrets and God will reveal you one day when it's inconvenient to you <laughs> so it's best to live righteous amen it is best to live a righteous life so I hope you got something out of that God bless you and remember with grace comes holiness Reverend Essie signing off to God be the glory for the things he has done.